Hey friends, welcome to my channel, Let's Get Crafting. These are the projects we're gonna be working on today. And our first one up is going to be this cloche shell keepsake. I am so excited about this because I have had this cloche clock for a quite some time and I've been wanting to turn it into something special and I knew that I wanted to put something that was a keepsake inside of it. So for my coastal theme that I'm doing right now for the DIY daily series, I thought I would do shells. I thought, how cool could it be to have something like this if you have shells from a trip or if you just like that coastal look. Now I picked up my cloche clock from a thrift store, but you can purchase these online. And it's amazing how you can take something like this, take it apart and turn it into something really cool, like a keepsake with these shells in it or any other things that you might wanna display inside of them. But I just thought for this coastal theme, how cool would it be? So you saw I took out the clock from the actual base. And now what I'm doing is I'm taking some shish kebab sticks and I'm going to be hot gluing on all these different shells. Now the important thing about this is to make sure that the shells are glued on really well. You can see that I'm taking my time to make sure each one is glued on properly so that way they're nice and straight as much as possible because if they're crooked, then it's gonna have a hard time for them to look really polished and clean. So just make sure that you hold them for the time that they're needed. You can see that this unicorn horn shell <laughs> you can see that i'm holding it there in my hand because that one for some reason was just having the hardest time to dry but all the other ones were pretty easy so you just basically add some hot glue and then you're going to just put the shell on and make sure it's nice and straight now when we start to put this thing together we're going to have different heights of these and i'm going to show you in just a second why it's super important to make sure that you get the height right because it can have a problem with the glass top the cloche part so now what we're going to do is create a base. I used my glass dome. You can see here that I traced a circle around some foam cord. I did that twice and then I cut them both out. This is going to allow us to be able to put those shish kebab sticks down inside of the foam cord. So it's not going to have any problems with them standing upright. So I'm just adding some hot glue to bring the two of these pieces together. And then I picked up some of my white burlap that I had in my craft room and I'm just going to pull that nice and tight around all of the sides making sure that the top part is nice and smooth as much as possible. This is going to make it look really high end making it nice and smooth and tight. Then I'm going to cut off all the extra so that way I don't have any bumping or issues with it not laying flat and then I'm going to check it again make sure it all fits right add some hot glue put that right on and now i can start adding on all of my shells this part was really fun to do now like i said the important thing is, is you don't want your shells to be too high so make sure you keep checking the height of the shells and how tall they are especially with the dome you do not want them to have an issue where you glue them all down and then find out that the shells are hitting the top of the glass. So I just had fun with it, mixing up the shells. Make sure you think about the colors. Don't put too many pinks next to each other or too many whites next to each other. It's nice to move them all around. And then when you're done, put the top on it and display it somewhere in your home. Today for my featured friend on my Summer DIY Daily is Sincerely Jacqueline. She has a brand new channel and she only has six videos up and today makes her seventh one and friends, she is so talented. She makes the most high-end beautiful things. I am really inspired by her boho farmhouse, just high-end look to her projects. Go check her out. She's linked in my description box below and send her some love. And if you're coming over from her channel, welcome. My name is Heidi from Heidi Sample DIY and I'm posting here daily throughout the months of June and July for my new series. For this project, we are gonna be making a lantern and we're gonna take these long paint sticks these painter stirrer sticks. I hear people call them all kinds of different things, but they come from the home improvement stores locally to you. And we are gonna take the long ones and cut down 
eight of them. These are gonna become the side structures for our lantern that we're making. And then once you've got eight of those all cut down to the size that you need, and they need to all be the same size, you're then going to go ahead and take some wood stakes that you would use in your garden. I see a lot of people use these around their gardens, but these are wood stakes that you can also pick up from your home improvement store. And I'm gonna be using a combination of wood glue and hot glue for that long-term, short-term hold to make sure that it nice and strong bonds together. We are gonna have six of those. This is going to be the base of our lantern. I'm gonna leave all the measurements down below so that it's not making this video too complicated. So if you're needing the measurements, go ahead down to the description box and you'll see them down there. But I'm gonna go ahead and glue all of those six pieces together to create a very pretty, nice, solid base. Now you could do these with the painter sticks. I decided to use these wood stakes instead because I just liked how they were more substantial, thicker, sturdier looking. I just liked how they looked. But again, you can use painter sticks if you would like. So once you got all of those all wiped and cleaned up, because you could see there that I was pulling off some of that extra glue that kind of squirted out, you're gonna go ahead and start gluing on the sides. So again, I'm using the wood glue with the hot glue, long-term, short-term hold, and then to make it really strong and sturdy, we are gonna take our staple gun and we are just going to staple in a, two staples on it to make sure that it's nice and strong. And by the time we're done with this thing, it is gonna be so sturdy and it is just gonna be so pretty on your front porch or wherever you decide to use it in your home. So now I'm putting on the other side and I'm just making sure that the sides match up and then I'm gonna move on to the next and I'm just gonna keep putting the two corners on, making sure that the sides match up with each other so that it is nice and smooth on the sides. And then you can see even as I'm going up, I'm putting little dots of that wood glue and hot glue to make sure that the top and the bottom and the sides are all glued together and then adding two staples at the bottom. So as I get around the corner to my fourth leg, I noticed something started to happen with this and I thought I would just mention it all so you would know. And I noticed that towards the top, you could see that they're starting to bow in towards the top. So when you go to glue on these support pieces, which I'm doing right here, I cut down eight of these smaller painter sticks because I wanted to wrap them around the bottom and the top to create a nice, pretty finished look and a structure to it. I cut eight of these, but you can see here that it's a little bit not all the way up to the edge because I want, again, I'm gonna show you in a second, add another piece to it. But up here at the top, when I went to go put up this piece, you can see that it's not fully lining up. So I had to actually pull it out from each other and make sure that it was not crooked. And that just happens with wood. Sometimes it'll just shift on you. So you're gonna see here that as I staple it, I'm gonna pull it out. You can see what I'm talking about. It wants to kind of collapse in a little bit. So just make sure you pull it out, glue it into place that hot glue so it'll hold it into place while the, the wood glue dries and then just staple it. And then I just flipped it over and did it on the other side, making sure everything was nice and straight and all glued and stapled together. Now, now, like I said earlier, you saw that I had a little bit of a spacing between those top parts. And I'm gonna show you in a second, I'm gonna fill them in with some really pretty smaller square pieces of wood that I just happen to have in my craft room. You don't have to do this. You could make those painter sticks that are coming around the bottom and the top the exact length but I wanted to have a little bit more detail, so I'll show you that in a second. But right now at the top, we're gonna to take some more of those wood stakes, and I'm going to use my miter box. Now there's a straight cut, and then there's a 45 degree angle cut, and you can see that I'm just going to cut at an angle, and I'm going to allow this to create a miter edge at the top, which is going to make it look so high-end and pretty. I love this little cutting toolbox. I'm gonna to link it down below, as well as my staple gun. I get asked about it all the time. And then see here, all the four pieces all cut with that little side angle. Now they are all gonna miter together beautifully and look super high-end. So here I am, I'm adding some more of that wood glue, hot glue, and I'm just gonna go around making sure every single side is pressed together really well so there's not a big gap. 
And then if you have any glue squirt out from pushing it together, just again wipe that away so it has a nice clean finish. And then once you get around to that last side, I'm going to set this over to the side just for a minute while I go back over to my actual lantern and add on this piece right here. So here is the piece I was talking about. I had this in my craft and I thought this would be really pretty. So on those eight pieces that I cut down to size to wrap around the bottom and the top, four of them I cut a little bit shorter and the other four I cut a little bit longer so that I can put this piece on there. I thought this would look so pretty to add on this little detail where you have this little corner that's kind of popped up and it's just gonna fit in there nicely. I'm adding in some more hot glue and some wood glue once again because I just wanna make sure that this is built really well. And I mean, this cost nothing. At this point, these are just seriously painter sticks, stir sticks, and these wood stakes. And look at how we can build the most cool things from it. Now, I could leave it like this, or we could make it a little more special. You know how I like to do it here on my channel. I like to take it a little further and just challenge myself a little bit more each time. So I'm gonna take these long sticks. They're not shish kebab sticks, they're I always forget what these ones are called. Leave a comment down below. I think steaks? Nope, that's not it either. Either way, these long shish kebab sticks, we're just gonna go with that name, but they're the really long sticks and I'm just gonna cut them down to size because I want to create a really pretty crisscross design work on the inside of this lantern and just add a little more something special to it. I thought that this would be really pretty. So you're gonna need two for each opening on your lantern. And you can see here that I'm simply just measuring it on the inside of the box first for my first cut. And now I'm just going back and cutting everything down to size so that it all fits perfectly inside of those spots. Once I had enough of them all cut, I'm gonna add in some hot glue into the corners and then I'm going to put them at an angle. I'm gonna go one way Make sure you hold it into place so it's nice and set. Add a little more glue on top of it so it's nice and glued in place so it doesn't move around on you or lift up. And then you're gonna go the other direction, the other corners, and you're gonna add some more hot glue and then just press them down. Now these are gonna to wanna to not lay flat that second one. So you're gonna to have to hold it down for a little bit while the glue dries. But again, this was super simple to do. So once I went all the way around with all four of those, I added some glue to the top and then I put on my miter top that we made earlier. And at this point, it just looks so pretty. I was so excited for this project and as my family was coming down to check on me to see how I was doing with this project, they all started saying, oh, it's a lantern, <laughs> which I had this thing for lanterns. They weren't sure at first what it was. My husband thought at first it was a trophy box, which I laughed because you never know with me. <laughs> so once I gave it a nice coat of paint, I'm gonna take some rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm actually gonna braid it. I thought it would be really pretty to have a nice, thick, substantial rope on this. I braided it, brought the ends together and just hot glued them so that they were nice and secured. And then I actually used one rope bundle from the Dollar Tree. I had took three long pieces that were equal length and then this was the little piece that was left over. I just unwrapped it and I'm gonna use that to bring it all together at the end, those little scraps that you saw me there pulling apart from the rope. So I wrapped it around the top of my lantern. I added in some hot glue to make sure it stays there forever. I don't want it to come off. And then I'm gonna add some more hot glue right here and that scrap piece of rope that was left over after I braided these. I'm gonna just wrap that around a few times to make a very pretty finished look up at the top. I loved how this turned out so, so much. And then, you don't have to do this part, you can skip it, but y'all know me, I just love a little roughed up edges, especially because I love that coastal look. I hope that you enjoyed today's projects. Now don't forget to go down below and click the link to Jacqueline's channel. Send her some love. Let her know that I sent you 
And if you enjoy these projects today and you decide to try them out, head over to Instagram and let me know. Leave a comment so that I can see it and tag me in it so that I can give you a shout out for trying them. Thanks so much for stopping by and watching this video and until the next episode, bye friends.